Number 8. Lloyd Byfield In September 2014, emergency responders found British mom Leon Duffy bludgeoned and stabbed at her flat in East London. She was airlifted to the hospital, where she succumbed to her injuries two days later. At the scene, investigators recovered a claw hammer and a kitchen knife that were used to carry out the gruesome attack. The murder weapons, along with phone records, eyewitness accounts, and other evidence, pointed overwhelmingly at Leanne's boyfriend, 49-year-old Lloyd Byfield, as the killer. Authorities tracked Byfield down a few weeks later during a traffic stop and charged him with the young woman's murder. The suspect allegedly told police that the devil took over his mind during the deadly assault. Less than a decade earlier in 2005, Byfield had been arrested for attacking another woman with a chisel. His criminal record included both violent crimes and a history of dealing drugs. The Jamaican national served 30 months in prison for the previous assault and should have been deported upon his release but was allowed to remain in Britain. Byfield admitted to forcing his way into Leanne's flat and stabbing her at least 14 times. And in the end, he pleaded guilty to murder and was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 26 and a half years. Number 7. Alexander Kozak 23-year-old Alexander Kozak was working as a security guard at an Iowa shopping mall in 2015 when he befriended a 20-year-old children's museum employee named Andrea Farrington. The two began a semi-romantic relationship, but it never became physical. After exchanging hundreds of text messages, Andrea noticed that Alexander had an explosive temper and ended the situation before it could go to the next level. Feeling led on by Andrea, Alexander retrieved his gun, re-entered the mall, and shot the young woman three times from behind. She died from her injuries despite extensive efforts to revive her, and Alexander was charged with first-degree murder. During questioning, Alexander admitted to killing Andrea. His attorney nevertheless argued that he was guilty of a lesser crime because he was mentally unstable and snapped, and because Andrea was allegedly knocking him back and forth like a ping-pong ball. According to the defense, he simply lost control over his emotions in the moment and was therefore less culpable than someone who deliberately plotted the crime ahead of time. Alexander's own mother acknowledged that he had a short temper when she took the witness stand at his trial. She said that she noticed that her son became even more volatile shortly before the murder, and she even admitted that she wasn't surprised about the shooting. But both she and Alexander's sister testified that he was a natural protector who always looked out for others. Needless to say, the jury was unswayed by these claims, and as a result, Alexander was found guilty as charged and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Number 6. Isabella Camelo Gomez 56-year-old Irene Jones was brutally murdered at her home outside Sydney, Australia in 2001. She just returned to the residence after celebrating her birthday with her 27-year-old daughter, Isabella Camelo Gomez, when someone strangled and stabbed her to death. Camelo Gomez, who went by the name Megan Jones at the time, told police that her mother had been attacked by a blonde intruder who was wearing a stocking over his head. She claimed that she stepped out of the shower to find her mother in a pool of blood on the floor and the suspect still at the scene. The young woman stuck to her story for the next 20 years, but investigators suspected that she wasn't telling the whole truth about what had happened. Someone had made a clumsy attempt to make it look like a burglary had occurred at the home, but there was no sign of forced entry and nothing valuable appeared to be missing. The case went unsolved until 2018, when authorities charged Camelo Gomez with her mother's murder. According to prosecutors, the defendant was obsessed with a married man named Carlos Camelo, whose brother she had married as part of a sham marriage visa agreement. Authorities argued that Camelo Gomez saw Jones as an obstacle to her pursuit of a relationship with Camelo, who they believe was in on the plot and was possibly even the killer. By the time the trial rolled around, Carlos Camelo was too brain damaged from an injury to face charges in court. But the court made a long overdue delivery of justice to Camelo Gomez, who was found guilty of murder and was sentenced to 20 years behind bars. Number 5. Marek Hecko in April 2022, Stephanie Bream broke up with her boyfriend, 26-year-old Marek Hecko, due to his destructive drug habit. But Hecko refused to accept that it was over. 
He barraged Beam with unwanted phone contact and showed up at her home and workplace, even though she'd made it abundantly clear that she wanted nothing to do with him. Pecco also stalked Bream's social media pages and obsessively searched online in a frenzied attempt to see if she'd started dating someone new. In the meantime, Bream began dating a 44-year-old single dad named Adrian Ellingford. The couple were in bed together at Ellingford's home in Essex, England one morning during the summer of 2022 when Hecko snuck into the house and grabbed a knife from the kitchen. He proceeded into the bedroom where he stabbed Ellingford with such force that he broke the knife handle. Ellingford died from his injuries, and Hecko was nabbed by police several hours later when he returned to the crime scene drunk out of his mind with a bottle of brandy in his hand. In between swigs of booze, Hecko bragged about how he knew what had happened at the residence. He was promptly arrested on suspicion of murder as he continued to ramble nonsensically about how clever he thought it was. But he's likely not feeling so slick anymore after being found guilty as charged and being sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 26 years. Number 4. Shana Hubers 28-year-old Ryan Carter Poston was an up-and-coming attorney from Kentucky who had no shortage of beautiful young women to choose from when it came to his dating life. In 2011, he met and began a relationship with a glamorous 19-year-old college student named Shana Hubers. Poston wasn't necessarily looking to settle down or even commit at that point in his life, but Huber seemed to have a long-term vision for the future of their relationship. Her behavior quickly became overwhelming and was a major source of stress for Poston, who told his friends and colleagues that Shana was controlling and jealous. He said that Shana had become terrifyingly obsessive, sending hundreds of text messages per day, and even showing up at his condo unannounced multiple times, despite living 90 miles away. After dating on and off for a year and a half, Poston made the decision to distance himself from Shayna, but he didn't put his foot down as firmly as he probably should have because he didn't want to hurt the young woman's feelings. Needless to say, Shayna's possessive and paranoid behavior continued. In October 2012, Poston made plans to go on a date with the winner of the Miss Ohio Beauty pageant, but he was unaware that Shayna had figured out a way to snoop into his messages and knew that he was trying to move on. On the night of the planned date, Shayna showed up at Poston's condo and shot him six times. And as Poston lay dying from his injuries, Shayna dialed 911, claiming that she'd shot Poston in self-defense and that he'd tried to attack her. Investigators quickly realized that Poston was in a defenseless position on the floor when Shayna shot him, indicating that he wasn't posing a threat to her. Unaware that there was a surveillance camera rolling in the interrogation room, Shayna talked to herself about what she'd just done when she was left alone. Her behavior only became more bizarre as the night went on. Shayna requested a lawyer, but wouldn't stop talking to anyone within earshot, even as the police went out of their way to disengage since they're not allowed to interrogate a suspect after the person asks for an attorney. The young woman's story of what happened changed several times as she continued rambling, and her commentary seemed not only insensitive but downright strange. At one point, Shayna said that she continued shooting Poston to spare him from surviving with a deformed face because he was vain, adding that she gave him the nose job he always wanted. During her trial, she claimed that Poston was abusive toward her, but the jury didn't buy her story, and in the end, Hubers was found guilty of murder. She's currently serving a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 17 years. Number 3. Richard Farley 35-year-old Richard Farley immediately became obsessed with 22-year-old Laura Black when they became co-workers at a defense contractor in Sunnyvale, California in 1984. Farley began regularly leaving gifts on Laura's desk and asking her out on dates, and he persisted even after Laura made it clear that she wasn't interested in dating him. Before long, Farley's infatuation evolved into full-blown stalking. He dug into Laura's personnel file for her address and other information, began following her outside of work, and sent her letters multiple times a week, along with doctored photos of him and her together. About a year after the problematic behavior began, Laura reported Farley to their employer. Farley was given a chance to get help and stop bothering Laura, but he refused to leave her alone and was fired in 1986. 
But of course, the stalking continued. Laura moved multiple times over a four-year period in an attempt to evade Farley, but he always found out where she was living and sent her hundreds of letters. In early 1988, Laura obtained a temporary restraining order against her stalker, but Farley's behavior only intensified over the following weeks. Just days before the restraining order was due to be made permanent, Farley loaded seven guns, over a thousand rounds of ammunition, a foot-long buck knife, and a smoke bomb into his car. Then, donning a bulletproof vest, he shot his way into the building where Laura worked, went to her office, and shot her through the door. A five-hour standoff ensued before Farley finally surrendered to police. In total, he fired 98 shots, killing seven people. Miraculously, though, Laura was among the four injured victims who survived. Farley was found guilty of the mass shooting and was sentenced to death. As of 2023, he remains on death row at San Quentin amid an ongoing moratorium against executions in California. The monumental case inspired the passage of the first ever anti-stalking laws in the US, which went into effect in California in 1990. Number 2. Jody Arias Sparks flew instantly when Jody Arias met Travis Alexander at a work conference in Las Vegas in 2006. She converted to Travis's Mormon faith just two months later, and in early 2007, the two began dating. Travis's friends quickly noticed that Jody's behavior was toxic and possessive. She followed Travis to the bathroom, refused to leave his side, wouldn't let him interact with other women, and was all over him when they were out and about in public. Some people tried to warn Travis that they suspected Jody of being dangerous, but their concerns fell on deaf ears, and the relationship continued. The on-and-off long-distance relationship lasted for about a year and a half before the couple finally called it quits. A few weeks later, Jody moved to Mesa, Arizona, where Travis was living at the time. She began showing up at his home unannounced and allegedly even snuck in through the doggy door one night. Travis sometimes got angry and sent Jody away, but he also often caved to temptation and welcomed her back into his bed, even after he began dating another woman. The consequences of allowing his former flame to remain in his life proved fatal in early June 2008, when Jody ambushed Travis with a knife while he was in the shower. She stabbed him more than two dozen times, cut his throat, and shot him in the head. Jody claimed that Travis attacked her first and that she'd killed him in self-defense. However, Travis's friends and family knew better. But even still, Jody's first trial ended in a hung jury. Thankfully, though, she was found guilty of murder the second time around and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. Number one, Pedro Bravo. 18-year-old Christian Aguilar went mysteriously silent in September 2020 during his first semester as a freshman at the University of Florida in Gainesville. His girlfriend, Erica Fryman, filed a missing persons report while accompanied by his best friend, Pedro Bravo, who was the last known person to see Aguilar. Bravo told police that Christian picked up a hitchhiker the previous evening during their drive home from Best Buy. He described the stranger as a gray-haired man in his 50s or 60s. Then, after dropping off the hitchhiker, Bravo claimed that he and Aguilar argued over how Aguilar was handling some problems in his personal life. Aguilar asked to be let out of the car, and that was the last time Bravo said he saw his friend. Investigators soon discovered that Bravo had previously dated Erica Fryman and that she'd broken up with him and started dating Aguilar. There were lingering tensions between the young men over their shared romantic interest, leading to speculation that it may have been a motive for Bravo to harm his friend. Roughly three weeks after Aguilar vanished, his decomposing remains were found in a wooded area. Further investigation revealed that Bravo had drugged his Gatorade with sedatives and most likely strangled him to death. Bravo was arrested for murder, and by the time his trial rolled around, the prosecution had secured an extremely strong case with overwhelming evidence pointing toward the defendant's guilt, including information from a jailhouse informant that Bravo had confided in about the crime. He was found guilty of seven charges, including first-degree murder, which carries an automatic life sentence without parole in Florida, as well as kidnapping, false imprisonment, poisoning, and improper transportation of human remains. But that wasn't all. He was also found guilty of giving false information to law enforcement in a missing person case, tampering with evidence, and providing false reports. 
9. Paul Stenson Things couldn't get much better for 32-year-old Samantha Rosser during the 2021 holiday season. She was engaged to the love of her life, Paul Stenson, and was looking forward to their upcoming wedding. One night, while the couple and their two children were getting ready to watch Christmas movies together at their home in Liverpool, Paul's mom called and invited the youngsters over to meet her new puppy. The couple dropped the kids off at their grandma's house and went to a Christmas party nearby. While they were there, a stranger named Adam Fletcher began hitting on Samantha. She told Paul she was uncomfortable with Fletcher's behavior, so he let the man know that Samantha was taken and politely asked him to back off. Fletcher denied flirting with Samantha, who decided she wanted to go home and went to the car to wait for Paul. Just when it seemed like the matter was dropped and dealt with, Fletcher stabbed Paul in the chest with a kitchen knife as he was leaving the party. He dropped to the floor and died from his injuries. Fletcher was convicted of murder and was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 22 years. 8. Yolanda Dillian Just days before Christmas in 2022, emergency responders were called to a Travelodge hotel in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, on a call of possible violence. They found 54-year-old Uber driver Yolanda Dillian slumped over in her vehicle with several stab wounds and rushed her to the hospital, where she was pronounced dead. During the day, Dillian worked as a fiscal budget analyst for the New Orleans Police Department. She moonlighted as an Uber driver to earn money to buy gifts for her family and for kids at her church. Yolanda was extremely well-liked and was known for being extremely kind and hardworking above all else, so it was hard for anyone who knew her to understand why someone would want her dead. In retracing Yolanda's last movements, investigators discovered that she had picked up an Uber customer named Brandon Jamal Jacobs. They didn't have to go far to track him down. He was staying at the same hotel where Yolanda was found. In a written confession, Jacobs allegedly stated that he woke up that morning and decided he was going to kill someone for no real reason other than he felt like doing it. He chose Yolanda at random and stabbed her from behind while riding in the back seat of her car. Jacobs recorded the horrifying crime with his phone and posted the footage on social media. He faces a second-degree murder charge, which carries a life sentence without parole in Louisiana if convicted. 7. D.K. Choudhury After immigrating to the U.S. from India, 37-year-old Dayabhai Kalidas Choudhury took a job at a convenience store in Dalton, Georgia, where he went by the nickname DK. So it came as a complete shock when a knife-wielding thief chased him into the back room and attacked him one day in 2014. In surveillance footage, DK could be seen trying to hold the back room door shut as the suspect pushes their way in. The culprit stabbed him repeatedly with a long kitchen knife, then attempted to wrap his head in duct tape. To make him die faster, the killer pushed down on DK's body and applied pressure to his nose and mouth. The suspect stuffed a large amount of particular lottery scratch-off ticket into their bag and fled the scene. Investigators traced the crime to a young woman named Sky Mims, who had moved to Georgia from Detroit to pursue a hip-hop career. They connected her to the scene through DNA evidence, a phone she accidentally left behind, and testimony from one of her housemates, who said that Sky had recently shown him some things that matched the description of items that were used in the murder. When police went to arrest Mims for murder, she acted out of control in an apparent attempt to get them to shoot and kill her. Her behavior only became more troubling throughout the court proceedings. Prosecutors allege that Mims was motivated to commit the robbery out of a strange obsession with the scratch-off ticket she stole. She was struggling financially and seemed to believe that if she got her hands on enough of the tickets, she would eventually score a winner. Her goal was to be able to focus on her art and music without needing a day job. Mims was found guilty of murder, armed robbery, burglary, and other charges. Her attorney urged the judge to consider a parole sentence due to the defendant's obvious mental health issues, while the prosecution agreed not to pursue the death penalty but made no concessions otherwise. The judge sentenced Mims to life in prison without parole. 
6. Sudden Sinkhole Displaces Dozens On Christmas night in 2022, a large sinkhole opened up and swallowed almost an entire parking lot in Patton Township, Pennsylvania. A water main broke during the collapse, forcing dozens of residents to evacuate their homes and find another place to live until repairs took place. After having their holiday disrupted, the displaced residents learned from their homeowners association that they were responsible for having a structural assessment done on their homes within 45 days. To determine if it was safe to return, each homeowner had to find someone to perform the assessment and foot the bill for it. This was just the first step in being able to return home. Once the assessments were out of the way, the HOA would coordinate with the local code administration and water authority to discuss where to go from there. The ordeal has been a nightmare for the affected homeowners who never expected to be put out of their homes so suddenly or to face an uncertain future with their housing. Construction crews started filling in the sinkhole in mid-February and the work appears to be ongoing. According to the most recent update, much of the hole had been filled in, but some parts remained unfilled. It's unclear whether the broken water main has been repaired or if any of the residents have moved back into their homes. 5. Keith Boissier Nicknamed the Baltimore Running Man, Keith Boissier famously ran 20 miles, 32 kilometers a day and in every type of weather for over 30 years. Nothing stopped him from his daily exercise routine, which made him a local celebrity of sorts. After enjoying years of peaceful daily runs with no issues, the 62-year-old was attacked one afternoon along his regular route by two men, who shoved him to the ground and beat him. Boissier later told local station WBAL-TV that the attackers continued to punch him after he got back on his feet. Luckily, he managed to flag down a police officer. The suspects claimed that they saw Boissier following a young girl, which he denied, and the officer believed Boissier, but made no immediate arrests. At the time the story broke, he said he was still deciding whether to press charges against his attackers. The community rallied around Boissier, who sustained a black eye and some other facial injuries. He and others used the incident as an opportunity to campaign against the ongoing violence in Baltimore. People had expressed concern for the running man's safety in the past, worrying that his local fame and daily presence in the streets could make him a target. But Boissier was well-liked, and there was no reason for anyone to have a problem with the eccentric but harmless running enthusiast. He vowed not to let the attack stop him from continuing his daily runs. 4. Nicole Hammond 28-year-old Nicole Hammond's work environment became stressful after a co-worker began pursuing her romantically in late 2022 and didn't want to take no for an answer. She repeatedly rejected 36-year-old Michael Carpenter, but he kept making unwelcome advances when they crossed paths at the textile business in St. Cloud, Minnesota, where they both worked. The harassment had been going on for a month when Nicole sent Carpenter a text one evening making it crystal clear that his behavior would not be tolerated and telling him not to make things uncomfortable at work. She went to work the next day, presumably with the expectation that she had finally gotten through to Carpenter and that things would go back to normal. Instead, she was fatally gunned down in the parking lot. A witness reported hearing a gunshot and then seeing Carpenter running to his vehicle and driving away. Police tracked him down later that day and took him into custody on a second-degree murder charge. Carpenter reportedly claimed that he heard a gunshot and was so traumatized by the sight of Nicole's injuries that he fled the scene. But he also failed to dial 911 or seek help for her like someone would normally do after witnessing a shooting. Other employees at the business told police that Carpenter had a bad temper and that he was upset about Nicole putting her foot down in their conversation the night before. Unfortunately, management wasn't aware of the harassment. The company's CEO, Rob Dubow, told Fox 9 that management steps in at any time their intervention is required, but that they had no knowledge of the situation and no indication that anything was wrong. Nicole's murder came as a shock to Dubow who described the young woman as a great worker who was liked by everyone she met. If convicted, Carpenter could face up to 40 years in prison. 3. Dustin Prosita 
Homeowner Dustin Proceda was relaxing and listening to music at his home near Lake Englebright, California one evening in 2022, when something suddenly hit his porch and burst into flames. He managed to escape the rapidly spreading blaze, but only had enough time to rescue one of his two dogs before the residence was completely engulfed in smoke and fire. Residents gathered nearby as firefighters fought the out-of-control blaze. Some people had seen a glowing object falling from the sky, leading to speculation that a meteorite had crashed into Presida's house. Ring doorbell footage revealed that a mysterious flaming object had, in fact, slammed straight into the home. While it's incredibly rare for meteorites to hit people's houses or cause this kind of damage, it seemed like the most likely explanation in this case. It's unclear whether an official cause for the fire was ever established, but at the time the story broke, a fire department spokesperson didn't dispute that it was a possibility. Sadly, Prosita and his wife lost everything, and they didn't have homeowner's insurance, leaving them with nothing but the shirts on their backs. Thankfully, the community stepped in and started a fundraising campaign, which collected enough donations for the couple to buy a camper to live in while they start over, essentially from scratch. 2. Convenience Store Chaos What started out as a normal workday for co-workers at a New Jersey gas station in early 2022 quickly went awry when a terrified woman rushed inside, then slammed and locked the door. Barefoot and wearing only a t-shirt and shorts in 42-degree weather, she explained that a man was holding her captive at a nearby residence. An employee dialed 911. The accused kidnapper, 57-year-old James Perillo Jr., allegedly followed the woman to the gas station but left after realizing the door was locked. Harrowing footage showed the victim running into the store with just enough time to lock the door as the suspect approached. Officers found Perillo walking on a nearby street and arrested him on suspicion of first-degree kidnapping and several other crimes. According to police, Perillo and the victim began a consensual relationship in early 2022 after meeting in New Mexico. She became a prisoner after she tried to end the relationship about a month later and said she was assaulted by the suspect, who allegedly took away her phone, ID, and credit cards, and cut her off from contact with her family. For the next year, the pair traveled throughout the country. They had arrived in New Jersey about two weeks before the woman escaped and were living in a rented room. She saw her opportunity to run when her captor realized that there were other people in the building and briefly paused in the middle of beating and choking her. The victim remembered from a previous visit to the gas station that its door locked from the inside, so she fled there for safety. Thanks to her quick thinking and bravery and the employees who helped her, the woman was brought to safety. Perillo remains behind bars while awaiting trial. 1. Pest Control Procedure Destroys Home the owner of a 10,000-square-foot, 929-meter-squared home in Maryland was dealing with an ongoing snake problem in late 2021 when they decided to try smoking the pesky reptiles out. Hoping to end the infestation once and for all, they burned some coals in their basement and continued about their normal day. But they had made the grave mistake of putting the coals too close to some combustible materials and the house burst into flames. Nobody was home when it happened, and by the time a passing motorist saw the fire and dialed 911, the blaze had started to spread uncontrollably throughout the multi-story home. 75 firefighters responded to the scene and spent hours getting the fire under control. It continued burning until the next morning. It continued burning until the next morning leaving about $1 million worth of damage in its wake. Luckily, nobody was injured, but things could have turned out much differently if anyone had been inside the house when the flames broke out. The accidental fire highlighted the dangers of using unconventional pest control methods, and how something can go devastatingly wrong in the blink of an eye when someone tries to handle a problem that is better left to a professional.
Which of the following would be worse? Living down a street from an ex who refuses to let go of their grudge against you for ending the relationship years earlier, or staying off social media for a year while living miles away from your nearest neighbor? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.